Hey, great to see everybody. I'm John Zadar, and this is the last day of the month and the first day of the week, February 28th, Monday, and you're watching On Top and Hot, where I like to go out and look at OTC stocks and penny stocks and bring you back something of value. Now, today we're looking at a stock, DRCR, Deer Cashmere Holdings, which we've looked at twice before. It had potential then, and it's got more now. But back then, we were in a holding pattern. We were having to wait and be patient for them to finish their beta testing and work up to the launch. Well, the launch is right now. So, I want to share this information with you before it gets out of reach. Come on. Are you ready? Me too. So we're looking at DRCR. This is Deer Cashmere Holdings, and we're going to be starting our initial due diligence on the otcmarkets.com website, simply because it's current. I'm not a member. I don't pay anything here. It's all free. It's just updated every single day by the SEC and FINRA. So why go to Google searching and sorting through old information? Don't we want what's most current? Of course we do. Just come here. So DRCR finished the day at 54 cents. They had a down day, 8% down almost. I'm going to call it a buying opportunity. She's on the pink tier and current as a verified profile and a transfer agent verified as well. So everything looks good over there. Now they tell us that DRCR is now operating as Swifty Global. Swifty is a technology company operating out of London, New York, and Dubai. They develop groundbreaking blockchain and cryptocurrency solutions, which we're going to focus in on. Uh, Swifty's artificial intelligence is what makes their apps different. Uh, they increase productivity with less manual interactions and provide you with the right data at the right time. Now, the best way to describe what they do is just to take you to their site. Now, they've got two products. They call them projects. Swifty Wallet, which is coming out this month, at the end of this month, which is right now. They've been working on this for a long time. A lot of pieces are in play, and it's ready to launch. Their second project is Swifty Predictions. This is due out before the end of this quarter. So you're looking at about four to six weeks, 30 to 45 days at the most. Now, they really don't give us a lot of specific information here. It's pretty general. It gives you an idea that they work with streamlined checkout, easier payment solutions and options, making your investments easy, but there was more to it than all that. So what I did is I went and got a whole bunch of sentences out of their own press releases, and I thought that would explain it better than their website did. Swifty is preparing to release its innovative Swifty wallet, which will be the first known DeFi wallet wallet to support multiple blockchains and all your wallets in one. It will include networks such as Binance Smart Chain, Ethereum, Phantom, Polygon, and Solana, just to name a few. Our product is very much a case of download and play without all the technical complexities. Swifty is currently completing its next phase of required banking compliance and licensing to offer users fiat accounts bank accounts, if you will, linked to their cryptocurrency holdings within their Swifty wallet. Ultimately, a Swifty virtual Visa card will be on offer later this summer. Now, folks, this is a big deal. What this actually does is it touches on to the unbankable. People that don't have bank accounts, can't get bank accounts, don't even have credit cards. This is an answer. This is a solution to a, a whole market there that can be tapped into, not only for this company's sake, but for the users. It's a great product for them and everybody else. Swifty users will be able to download the Swifty wallet once set up. Users will be able to buy, sell, swap most of the world's crypto coins. I know they've got over 5,000 of them. They can trade NFTs, operate day-to-day -day fiat currency account, a bank account. You can put money in, pull money out, pay for things. Users will be able to top up other apps like Swifty predictions and more. Now, that's the main reason that they have this. Swifty Predictions is the other product we're going to take a look at. And you need money in it to make bets. The Swifty Wallet puts the money over there, tops it up for you, which is a term most definitely used more over in Europe and the UK, top up. You can pay as you go, if you will, on your phone, on your heating bill, your electricity, gambling. You just pay as you go and you just add money to it and roll along. A user will be able to have a single wallet 
encompassing all their coins and wallets, integrating fiat, money and cash, crypto, NFTs, mainstream banking, Visa cards, DeFi, flash loans, and potentially in the future, even fractional stock trading and FX trading, all from one single application. Think of it like a mall. You know, all the stores are in one place and they're going to handle all the payments, whether it be crypto to crypto, crypto purchasing, pay for something with crypto, sell your crypto to get the money to pay for it, top up something uh, and bet and gamble. And this is really their market. I mean, they are touching on to multiple sectors, but the gambling is where they're focusing on sports betting. Swifty believes that crypto wallets and crypto visa cards are undoubtedly the future and the company will be a global pioneer of the technology. They are out there. It's global. It's not just, as a matter of fact, it's mostly not in the United States. It's mostly worldwide and coming to the United States as the United States allow for more and more gambling online. Let's take a look at that second product that they got over here. Swifty Predictions. Now again, Swifty Predictions is a great product, but they don't give us a lot of information about it. What this basically is, is do you remember Tinder? I don't even know if Tinder is still around. A guy or a girl would come up on the app, and if you liked them, you swiped right. If you didn't like them, you swiped left, and you hope something would happen because you swiped right. Well, that's what this is. It's AI backed. It gets to know you, how you bet, how you gamble. You've given it some information. It's learning more, and then it just presents you with bets as the game is going. Micro bets. So spontaneously, you can accept the bet with the right swipe or reject it with the left and this increases betting because bets are just put on the table right in front of you and that's all it takes sometimes to get people to move now normally when we go looking at share count all we're interested in is the float we get that number and pfft, we're out of here but this time there's a little bit more information that we can glean from this if we do a little bit of DD and connect the dots our unrestricted shares is where you're really going to get the float. It will list the float down here, but I find in most cases it's either out of date or just isn't right. But the unrestricted shares is virtually what the float is. And in this case, we have 11 million in the float. That is a low float. Legitimately, 11 million is a low float. Now, what we don't normally look at are the restricted shares. These are just sold to the insiders, whether they be the management or uh, inside investors, hedge funds, uh, institutions. But in saying that, OTC, pink stocks, they're not going to get hedge funds. They're not going to get institutional investments simply because they're too small. This is just outside of the realm of those big investors. So you're not going to get the big investors, but you're going to get big investments from people. And that's what you want to see sometimes. So what I found here was a clip out of a news press Right here, the main shareholders of Swifty Global are Nicholas Link as the chairman, James Gibson as the CEO, and Eyeless International Inc. as a public company listed on the OTC markets. All are invested in the long-term future of Swifty and do not have any intention of selling their shares in the foreseeable future. Now, it's pretty easy for them to say because, well, as they just said, these two gentlemen, uh, James Gibson, which is right there, the CEO of this company, and Nicholas Link. They're both together, so they know each other's business. They know that they don't want to sell. Now, one other name I do want to drop in since it's here, Karen D. Courier. Now, if you don't know Karen, you should. In many companies, she holds one position or another. She could be a consultant. She could be an accountant. She could be the CEO. This lady went out and saved 14 companies that were in the burn barrel. They had gone to the expert market. They had quit filing and, well, there was no management around anymore. Literally, the people all jumped off the boats and the boats are just floating in the water with nobody there. So she towed them all in, got all the licenses converted, cleaned up any bad debt on them, then made some deals and sold those boats. And she's got companies into all of her saved companies and they're making money now and she retains a position in each one of them now this nicholas link he's in charge of one of her other companies eyeless international right here it tells you nicholas link is the ceo of this company and there you go karen d courier is the accountant in this one 
Now, just as the news press said, James Gibson, Nicholas Link, and Illustrato Pictures, I-L-U-S, are the primary shareholders. It's verified over here in the most current finance report for DRCR. If you scroll down, you can get a list of anybody that owns more than 5% of the company. If you owned more than 5%, your name would be on here. So it's a real short list, and there are six of them here, but two of them don't count anymore. Right here, these two from Kansas each had the exact same amount of shares. They were issued in 2020, but the deal did not complete and the shares are due to be canceled ASAP. And that's really all I know about that. We got a man in China who owns about 7% of the company. And then you have Mr. Gibson and Mr. Link. They own the rest. You have 50-50 split on the preferred shares, which I find pretty interesting. Nicholas Link is the CEO of Eyeless. But obviously with Karen Courier, something could be going on because this looks like a negotiated deal. They each have 5 million common shares and they each have exactly 50% of the preferred shares. So it's a perfect split right down the middle. And then on top of that, Illustrato Pictures, which Nick Link is the CEO of, has its own purchase and they bought 20% of the company, another 10 million shares. So Nick Link has 30% of the company's outstanding shares. The CEO has 10% of the outstanding shares. Between them, there are 40% of the outstanding shares swallowed up. You think they're serious about making this work? I do. Now, of course, we're not going to see anything under the revenues. They're not making any money yet. Matter of fact, they're spending more money than they're making. They're just launching their Swifty app. Today, their Swifty wallet is coming out. In about 30 to 45 days, you're going to see their predictions app come out. And since they now got a license, a gambling license, which has been the only holdup, things are going to start moving. And I'm going to show you what that's all about here. We got no disclosures really to talk about, so let's just jump over to that news. Now, they've had lots of news. They've been talking about their beta testing on the wallet. They've been talking about the progress on their prediction app. And they've been really talking about the applications for gambling licenses. They've been applying from country to country, from state to state. And finally, one came in. They could not progress any further until they had a license. So they got one here in December. So we read here, the company announced today it has been awarded its first gambling license, first of many, which allows the company to launch its disruptive sports betting product to most of the world's markets. Swifty's been awarded its Caraco license, which covers access to almost 80% of the world's markets for gambling, the largest coverage for any single license. Well, for our first license, you want it to be the biggest, and that's real important here. Although the Croco license does not cover markets such as the US and the UK, it is very significant for Swifty's initial rollout strategy, as it does cover some of the largest gambling markets in the world, like Canada, Ireland, Brazil, Spain, Germany, Mexico, and Colombia. They're in those countries now. They are legit in those countries. So this opens up approximately 340 million people that they can advertise to. Now remember folks, this is an online app. Once it gets out there for those countries, it's out there for all the countries. And as the licenses start to pop, the business is going to grow. Now the big thing here is, now that they've got their license, now that they have a launch pad, the biggest launch pad they could get from that license, they can hit their marketing campaign and they want to spend millions and millions of dollars. That's right, just on marketing this. And they're going to do it through a lot of different ways. They're going to use their own database of over 5 million relevant contacts that are already involved in gambling. Go knocking on their door, see what they can stir up. They're also going to work with sports sponsorships. They're going to try to get affiliated with big name companies that have brand recognition. And that's going to lift them up as well. They also want to get to television. They're doing all of this right now. The first and second quarter of 2022, they are going to be advertising themselves in every sort of way that you can imagine. So don't be surprised to see them everywhere. 
Now they tell us also that Swifty is very close to obtaining the UK gambling license. Now when you watch the podcast of the CEO, this is really what they want. Because the UK and sports betting is huge. They've got bookies in every city, numbers of them. Now I lived there 10 years in Scotland and it's no big deal, it's just part of the community. There's not gambling addicts hanging out on corners or anything, it's just part of life. They're clean, they're almost like walking into a pharmacy. but they are huge business and this is what they're hoping for but they also want to get into the state simultaneously the company has a team working on the USA licenses and will announce more information on these licenses soon and what could well be a breakthrough move Swifty is exploring the option to partner with a pan-american operator utilize their license for a rapid rollout across most of the US now that would be great instead of having to go to every single state you get with a company that's already working in multiple states Whew. exponential growth in the USA which is really where everybody wants to get why well let me show you now Americans love to bet on sports whether it's legal or not it's done we all know it but we would prefer it legal and recently the law was changed or kind of there was a law passed in the early 1990s the PASPA PASPA -A, that prohibited states from allowing gambling on college teams and professional sports teams plain and simple and we haven't been able to gamble since then up until 2018 when the Supreme Court overturned that ruling however contrary to most popular belief it had nothing to do with the ethics of gambling it had to do with the overextension and reach of the federal government they can't tell the states that they can or cannot do this just like marijuana so the prohibition on gambling ended in 2018 and it has been running now for three years with every state having their own rights to this situation they're like countries they get to make their own rules for who and how gambling is allowed if they allow it and right now the most important part is that we have 20 states all the green states allow online gambling this is where companies like this are going to be able to operate we have eight more that are about to go legal nine are legal but only with retail operations Florida's in a, a real sticky mess right now with contractual law with some native tribes and then you've got eight here that say they may never go legal now you've got to wonder is this enough money can we make enough money off of these states what kind of income is it bringing in well I'm glad you asked well this page will answer that question for you US sports betting revenue and handle handle is how much they wagered how much are they betting there's only three terms you really need to know handle is how much they wager revenue is how much the bookies the gambling companies get to keep that's the percentage and this is the taxes how much the jurisdictions get to keep now there's some small numbers in here Arkansas only had 120 million uh, Connecticut only 494 million you've got some states like Illinois doing 8 billion or you've got Michigan doing 4 billion but how about Nevada doing 20 billion or for that matter New Jersey doing 24 billion let's just add it all up make this easy since the Supreme Court passed the law and whether a state's been there three years or three months add it all up together because as you can see this has been last updated February 28th and is inclusive since June 2018 our totals they have wagered 102 billion dollars that's how much wagering has come in of that seven and a half billion dollars has been kept by the gambling companies the bookies and of that one billion dollars was kept in taxes so it's generating revenues everywhere for everybody and it's just starting we've got a few states going only for a few years and only a few companies have penetrated the market so it's going to grow and it's going to grow fast 
Now the last PR I'm showing you here came out February 3rd, just a couple weeks ago, but it's not the last PR. The last one came out February 10th and it announced the launching of the Swifty Wallet, which is happening right now. So there's no need to look at that one. But this one, this one actually announces catalysts to come. And I love getting a forewarning on a catalyst. Now the first one, you may not consider so big, but I like it. Swifty is expecting to have a desktop version complete within the next four weeks. There are dinosaurs like me that just prefer to be on a computer. I like a big screen. I like big buttons. It's just comfortable for me. But there are other people who have issues with connectivity on their phones. They can get a steady connection on a computer, but they can't on their phone. So it's just beneficial for them. In either case, it is a catalyst. They go on to tell us another one. Swifty is in the process of applying for numerous country specific licenses, which should be approved over the coming months. So you've got one catalyst in one month. These are coming over the next coming months. Ooh, I like this. And of course, each one of these licenses, which is what I've got highlighted in red, are going to bring in the potential of more revenue. Then they go on to say, along with the application for its own licenses in several U.S. states, Swifty is also in discussions with prominent global casino chains in the USA and Asia, both big markets. Should agreements be reached, Swifty will be able to piggyback off the casino licenses. We were just talking about that. These partnerships will exponentially speed up Swifty's route to market in the relevant territories. In addition to that, the company's increased exposure through well-known brands will increase the product uptake. Swifty is aiming to have at least one of these partnerships finalized relatively soon. Cha-ching! There's another catalyst. Regarding its UK gambling license, Swiftly believes it has completed the required compliance process and is now anxiously waiting for approval of its UK license so that it can begin its UK rollout. Cha-ching! Look folks, that's going to be a big one. All of these are catalysts. When you say we're making more money because we've got a new store, we're making more money because we've got a new contract, we're making more money because we've got a new license. It's all the same thing. So all of these are catalysts, but they just added another one. They sure did. And this one is found on Twitter. And the last catalyst actually comes from Swifty Global's Twitter account themselves, not just some yeehaw on Twitter. Nothing personal, yeehaws. This comes right from the CEO himself. Swifty Global may still be in its infancy, but we are making huge strides. This week, we were looking at new office space in Europe, expanding the team, and are looking at partnering with some crypto mining companies. <laughs> Let's just say things are shaping up well. All right, I can't add any more to it. There's just so many catalysts that could pop off at any time and the company is launching right now. What else can I say except let's go look at the chart. There she blows, DRCR six month, four hour chart on TOS. That's think or swim. If you don't have a trading platform, get your little fanny perpendicular over to TD Ameritrade and get yourself a free account. They'll give you this absolutely free. They'll ask for no money. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Just keep your account open and you can use this too. So our six month, four hour chart shows a big drop after a big high. She went from 20 cent low here to $3.36. That bounce right there was a 600% bounce. That's 150% bounce. And she's fallen all the way down here. Now she is nowhere near that low of 20 cents. And I don't think she'll ever get that low again. Now this jump, that 600% bounce, I tried to correlate to news. The only thing I could find was a little bit late and it had to do with them adding new team members to their management team. So maybe that's that. This one, real easy to figure out. This correlated perfectly to the news about them adding NFTs to the Swifty wallet. Big deal, at least for a while. Then it fell away and it fell hard, went under the 50 all this time, has just broke the 200 haul and is right under the 50. But we have no activity on the MACD. We have screwy activity on the RSI all under the 50. Now, my opinion, this is all people waiting. 
Once this happened, the NFT announcement, the rest was beta testing. We're going to be launching it soon. We're getting our app for the predictions taken care of. We're applying for licenses. People don't like to wait on the OTC market. Patience is thin. And that's why you don't see a big drop here. People have faith in this. They literally do. You can see they're just dribbling out. People are just dropping out because they only have so much patience. And right now, we are about ready to break that 50. And we've got catalysts upon catalysts coming. Let's take a look at that 20 day, one hour. All right, she is actually starting to make some moves here. She was under everything all the way here. And not too long ago, she started to fight to get over the 50. She started breaking through her 200, the 20, and she has now gotten on top of the 50 and is right under the 200. Our 200 haul, which is like a 200 SMA, except it takes more credence on current affairs, is starting to come up. And that should help push this price up. Now, it's a little wacky here. Our MACD is all over the place. Our volume is popcorn with big spikes and our RSI is up and down and up and down. But I expect it to all change. Once these PRs start coming out, once these licenses start hitting, this company's gonna make money. That's my opinion. Let's take a look at that five day, five minute. All right, she is sitting on the 200. She may be going low and then coming back. She may be going high but then coming back. And right now she's a little low, so I expect her to come back, but I really expect her to start growing. This is a good price right now. You can't get a better average than that, and I really don't expect any dips. You can see what goes on. She doesn't like to get too far away from the 200. So this is probably a really good price. Now I'm not saying buy everything you want right now. She could have a bad day, but honestly, in my novice opinion, I think this company has a lot of growth to go. The United States, the world, the gambling is opening up for all these online apps. And I don't know how many prediction apps are out there. And they got first mover advantage on this. So I'm really liking this one. If you're looking for a gambling company, this one may be it. Because prediction, spontaneous swipe left, swipe right with a wallet that can keep money flowing into that app for you without any hindrances. Sounds like a winning deal to me. Now, personally, I think this company is going places. I think it's a great concept, the synergy that they have between the Swifty Wallet and their prediction app. That Swifty Wallet is going to be able to keep that prediction app in green, whether it comes from the Visa, the bank account, the crypto, money is money. And they're going to make sure it's converted and can move over there without any problem. Then, on the other hand, you've got that bets coming up for you based on the sort of criteria you make bets. So it's just going to be like, well, have you ever been in a bar and had a bowl of peanuts sit there and you say, well, I'm not going to have any of those peanuts. I don't know whose hand's been in it or whatever your reason. And then as you're drinking, you find yourself grabbing the peanuts without even thinking about it. And that's the way I think this app is going to be. People are just going to, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're just going to go right without thinking about it. I think the app is going to be hot. I don't think there's a lot of competition out there. Gambling in America is only getting bigger and online gambling is where all the money's going to be. And there's not a lot of companies out there right now. And they got first mover advantage. And now they're getting into crypto mining. Okay. Okay. That's enough. Look, folks, this is hot in my opinion, but you got to do your own DD because you're investing your money. Remember, it's about how much you know. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. <music>